everybody. How you doing out there in the TV land? It's your boy Dusty. Back with you one more time here on the fabulous West Coast. San Jose, California. But it's November, you know. It's November. Normally it's snowing by now in Lake Tahoe. Weather ponies. Because there's no way we can actually snowboard or ski on rocks. So that water that you were saving for winter, it's about time to let it fly. Because we want to go snowboarding this year so we can film epic stuff for all our viewers out there in TV land. Thanks for coming. It's what? November, November 17th? Where's this month going? Where, where has the month gone? I mean, jeez. We had Nightmare Nights, then we had a week off, then we had Ponyville Cider Fest last weekend, which was awesome, by the way. Ponyville Cider Fest was awesome. If you didn't go, I think we had like 700 people show up, and, and there should have been more. The Midwest needs to... Psh. You Midwesterners, come, because it was great. It was awesome. Sam Vincent, all the people were there. <sighs> but you're not here to listen to me squawk about Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the Harley-Davidson Museum I didn't get to go to because it was closed. Mm. You are here to listen to the dulcet tones of one David Hammonds. Good evening, Ponyville. Good hey. evening, David. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you, Dusty Cat? Thank you. I am awesome. Thank you very much for having me on your program. Yes, been, finally. I think I've been doing uh, EQI and everything for what, three years now. This is my first real interview. Yes. I'm on the other side of the couch now. Yes, the other side. The other side of the couch. <laughs> yes. We have plenty, plenty, plenty of things to talk about with Dave because Dave has been in and out of all kinds of stuff over the last year. I mean, geez. Between, you know, doing EQI and then EQI sort of ending and then going off and doing these other things. We have plenty to talk about, so let's go straight into it with the number one question I ask of everybody. I'm sure you know this question because you watched the show. Oh, yeah. What are some of the cartoons and comics that you watched or are still watching and reading this day? Well, I think that the big cartoon that really got me into doing animation, doing anything, mm -hmm. has to be Ed, Ed and Eddie. I mean, oh, all, yeah. it's the end all be all of my personal uh, liking of animation. It's what got me into cartoons as an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, and and really, it, it's it, it was it was about the time of high school and everything. You know, I'll, I'll save you the long spiel, but you know, dark period of high school. Find Ed and Eddie, and it's like, oh awesome things, life is beautiful again. Yes. And then, you know, so Ed and Eddie, Powerpuff Girls, um, Fosters, all those really awesome, you know, Samurai Jack, mm -hmm. I call it like the golden age of car Cartoon Network. Yeah. And then it, it sort of like went into a gap where there wasn't really a whole lot good coming out. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, cartoons kind of like, you know, started sucking again. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then all of a sudden, Pony shows up, and I, I knew, here's, here's where I knew that Pony was going to be a, a, a big thing, and I didn't mean this to go into an origin story, but yeah. uh, when you look at the cast list, and, or not the cast list, but the production list of uh, Pony, mm -hmm. huge percentage of them are Ed, Ed, and Eddie people. Oh, yeah. Including Sibzy, Big um, Jim Miller, I think, I saw Woody. Woody's name on it, and I was like, Woody's in it? I'm going to love this show. I, I haven't seen it yet. And then you know, you had Tara Strong and Lauren Faust. I'm like, I'm done. I don't even. I haven't seen one second of this show. I'm gonna love it because it's all Edda and Nettie people and Powerpuff Girls people, and that means it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Speaking of Woody, where are you, buddy? You like disappeared off the face of the planet. You He's know? got some secret project going on. I, I know. He left. He left Pony a Secrets. year and a half ago, and I think Mr. Dave knows something that's going on with Woody. He won't tell me about. He's got secrets in his mustache. Secrets in his mustache. No, I have secrets in you my see, mustache. Have you so seen? I have got secrets the curly in my mustache. mustache though. He's I got know. The curly, I know. That's the dastardly mustache. The dastardly. Mustache. You've got the hero's mustache. I have the hero. He's got the dastardly's mustache. Mm. Yes. We must get him on this program. So if you know where he is, tell me, because I need to find it. Um, it's been forever. Somewhere in the great north beyond. Somewhere in the great north beyond. It's been forever since the EQI ended, um, or at least ended when you left. Okay. I, I, um, I, I, I pulled a Dave Chappelle. Yeah, you pulled a Dave Chappelle. I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. See ya. And uh, then you decided to come back to do because you and I talked and, and, and we were doing stuff on this show. So what 
the where the heck did you go? Well, um, BronyCon 2013 was the last big convention I went to. I went to Nightmare Nights after mm-hmm. that, but 2013 BronyCon, I premiered um, a cartoon that I had worked very hard on. Yes, with I was on that panel. Group of people uh, called Hell Hath No Hoagie. Uh, we premiered the cartoon, and it, we had a lot of expectations about what it was going to do, where it was going to go. Um, and so I thought, all right, this is where I want to go. I mean, as much as I did with the Brony fandom, and I love it, I sort of saw an opportunity with mm-hmm. my connections with people and my honing my honing my skills as as a comedian, as it were, uh, and saying, "Hey, maybe I can actually do this for a living." Mm, wild concept. Uh, wow. So um, I said, "You know what? I'm going to do. I, I've always loved animation. I want to actually make animation, and so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to use this as a launching pad." And so I I chased that. I went after that, and you know I got an agent in Hollywood. Um, and I, I made preps to move there and I actually got some, uh, some gigs, uh, writing, uh, and doing something. And, uh, um, then lo and behold, two things happened. Uh, I got a couple books published, um, that are coming out this next year and, uh, I got engaged. Uh, yes. so I made the decision, uh, to focus more on my novel writing career than, than writing for animation just because, I had a lot of, you know, it, it's a long story of where that decision came from. Mm. Uh, but now I'm back to where I have uh, enough time mm-hmm. to be able to do it. I think that's really what it was. It was a time issue. Uh, and, and now that I have the free time, and, and, and really what it came down to is EQI, it turned into something that it stopped being fun. You know, wow. it started being this big half hour production. Mm-hmm. We weren't really growing um, comedically. We weren't really growing as a show. And the show kind of reached its logical conclusion. And the reason I wanted to come back, because it's fun and I enjoy doing it. Yes. Um, and so um, I thought, okay, let's just bring it back to its original, which is just me yelling into a camera mm-hmm. for 60 seconds. And then uh, that allowed you to do that and allowed me to have my fun. Um, and, and that's where we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stop me if I'm ranting. No, you. no. I like it when you rant. Obviously, I like it when you rant, because I brought you in and put you in my show. So, right. obviously, I like it when you rant. Um, we talked before, and you've always told me you wanted to write for cartoons. So, uh, and that almost came true. Almost. It did. Because you were... You were it has it not come true yet, It has not come true yet, but you were hired and then at, by, on a show that was actually on TV, and then that show got canceled. Yes. So, I, got, I got a script out there. My agent and everything were set up. They were yes. going to have me interview with the... Uh, Corporate, they were going to approve it. Everything was gravy, and then the and, show got canceled. And yeah. I and I I don't really want to talk about no. what the show was. No, we can't talk about that show, but yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can't talk about. It. There's still some things in the works. Yes, my name my ha- name is still in the hat, as it were, uh, out, out there, and I'm still uh, pursuing uh, that. It's uh-huh. just not quite as aggressively uh, as I used to, yeah. um, due to the whole book situation. Absolutely, and then but the thing is that sort of took you into finding the guys that did Double Rainboom, and then into this project, which is True Tale. True Tale! Which we haven't actually seen a lot of lately. Oh, yes. There's a lot of production happening behind the scenes. So much production. So much production. But tell me what you... T- tell the, the old listening audience what you told me, which I didn't actually realize, is that you and one other person were basically... We basically created... Created it. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zachary Rich, uh, the the director, producer, whatever you want to call it, animation artist of uh, Double Rain Boom, um, he he liked Hell Hath No Hoagie. He saw my potential and he said, hey, I've got this show that I'm working on. Come write for me. You look like you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And me and another individual named Bernadette O'Keefe, who is on Twitter. You should follow her. She's great. Um, she had helped done some, done some story stuff with Double Rain. I did nothing with Double Rain. I did zero yeah. with it, but they, they were kind enough to invite me into the team for this project. And, um, we, we created the characters the, the, all they had was one sheet and it was six character descriptions. They said, we have a thief fox, we have a kitten hero, and then the others, but they were one sentence descriptions. And from one, those, those one sentence descriptions, we created an entire world, character descriptions, and then our wonderful artists created this great artwork for us. And those of you uh, might recognize a little bit of Ivan in Victor, if you, those of you have seen it. I mean, uh, my favorite thing to do is have Russians in speaking in third person. <laughs> and so I insisted that that Victor um, sort of talk like that. So there's a lot of my signature humor, I guess, in, in mm-hmm. a lot of these characters. And definitely Bernie's got a lot in there, too. Yeah. Um, 
But we created the script, we wrote the promo, we got it out there, we're pushing it, and we're pitching it to studios. Nice. We're, we're pitching it to places. Uh, we're, we're looking uh, to, to get it out there. Um, it's, it's, creating cartoons is a long process. Creating cartoons is something that takes a lot of development effort and a lot of luck. Mm-hmm. And um, it may not exist uh, in its current form. It may not exist at all. But we're certainly putting – there's a lot of people working very hard to get True Tale out there. Um, and there's a lot of really creative people behind it. And I wish I could tell the viewers to support it somehow. But, the, you know, just you know, watch the YouTube promo. Watch the, 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 the releases that we've done. And, you know, keep, keep people talking because uh, that's going to that's gonna help us when we say, hey, people actually like this crap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of getting it out there, um, fan build, right? Did yeah? Did did I know back a couple of years ago when Lee Tolkar had the whole fan build project thing going on? Um, this would have been like a perfect idea for the fan build concept, as yeah. it were. Um, did you guys have anything uh, with Lee Tolkar? Has Lee Tolkar seen this? Have you gone to the fan build people and say, hey, you know what's going on? Could we could get some help? Anything on that end? Um, it's not, I think the, fan, I haven't looked into fan build in ages. Um, uh, I think fan build is more oriented around getting people who can actually produce the project. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so those who have ideas and want to work with the production crew should definitely go to that. Uh, but right now we have our own sort of de facto production crew called okay. Skynamic Studios. Mm-hmm. Um, and if anyone wants to work with us, then, then they're more than welcome to come join. Uh, but I, I don't know. I've not thought about that. I might have to ask Lee Tokar about that. <laughs> yeah, well, if there's any evil characters that you need, I'm, I, I do evil voices, you know. Oh, yeah. I yeah, can yeah. do the evil voice. So. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or I can do monster voices. Monster so, voices. So make sure you... Yeah. Make, yeah. I'm there's begging here. <laughs> I'm begging, Dave. Come on. I auditioned, too. They rejected me. I know. I know. I it's no big deal. Tried, that was so long ago. It was so long ago. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, where am I at? Okay, when we first met, I'm going I'm to put up a... I'm gonna put up a slide here. Oh, you've got an old slide? Uh, no, I, no, I've got a slide that's gonna haunt you. Oh no! Yes, when we first met, you were still working for your family's black walnut business. I was. Now uh, you're a full-time writer. How scary was that jump from a consistent paycheck with your family business, obviously, to actually becoming a full-time writer? Terrifying. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you go from being an executive person with 401k and Mm -hmm. insurance um to hoping that your book comes out in time so where you can not live off ramen ramen noodles i mean it was a jump and it was a leap and it was just one of those things where enough things were building up to where i had been working at the company and being a writer and being a brony and balancing those two quite effectively for very for a number of years maybe three or four years Mm -hmm. and then it got to the point where i was doing so much with writing so much with you with uh with True Tale, my own writing, all that stuff, that it was actually interfering with my work. And I was an executive, and I said, look, I cannot be placed with more responsibility mm-hmm. in a position that I is not where I see myself long term. So I've got to make the jump, get out of here, and bring someone else in. And the timing ended up being perfect. My cousin came in, he took over the business, or at least my part of what I was running. Um, and, and, I, and I walked away with my head held high. I, we want a medal the last uh, when I was there for, for, for a good food award nice. for a product that I had introduced. So I walked away with doing a lot of good work at that company and, and knowing that I had some place to go. I think that's the biggest terror for us, anyone entering the creative arts, is when you leave your day job, where do you go? Mm-hmm. And I had a landing place, which was I had an agent, I had a published two published books mm-hmm. or th- books coming out in 2015. Yeah. Um, I've got more stuff on the way, and I became a professional editor uh, as well, and and so I'm editing books uh, for a living as well. So I've got all these other things. Um, I've got some place to land. There's mm-hmm. there's holes in my parachute, yeah, uh, <laughs> and it hasn't quite turned into an airplane yes. yet. But if my metaphor is still working, I'll soon be flying. Nice. Plus, you have a lifetime supply of black walnuts. Oh, yes. All the black walnuts I could eat. All the black walnuts you could ever eat. Mm-hmm. By the way, send some to me. I like them. Um, yeah. Let's see. Next. Uh, do-do-do-do-do-do. Slide. Put up the slide, Dusty. Okay. Um, so, you didn't do EQI alone. 
Um, you just didn't. There were there's a couple other guys that we haven't heard from in a while, and maybe Tech you can. Rat and LTT Tech Rat and LTT Moose. Moose. Um, oh, what a picture! What? A, yeah. So, what happened to these guys? I haven't heard from Tech in forever, and LTT Moose I know was working at NASA when he when you guys stopped. Yep. So, Modern it, Space Flight Center. Can you can you can you bring us up to speed on what's happening with the guys? Well, LTT Moose is, uh, me and him were talking about going to Hollywood together, doing all this stuff, mm -hmm. and then I, he started getting um, getting cast in plays out in Baltimore, uh, where he lives, and he started doing better things with NASA, and I think he just, like, he saw a lot of things that he was getting very satisfied with, you know, from, from a creative standpoint that he wasn't getting, so I think that he got all the, the creative stuff that he needed. He didn't feel like he needed to leave his job mm -hmm. uh, to come pursue it. And and Techrat um, works for an underground military operation and is about to see the light of day. No, I, I mean Techrat. Um, I think that um, there was a lot of um, pressure um, on, on things going on, and I think that he, like me, saw the logical end mm -hmm. uh, to what we had been doing, uh, especially when the live stream contracts for a lot of the the, the, the conventions was kind of expiring. We didn't really see our purpose in the mm -hmm. fandom anymore, and so he's like, okay, I'm going to go back to being an observer. An observer on the fandom. I don't. I, I'm not going to jump in. I'm, I'm going to still be part of it. I'm going to still be an observer uh, on that. I think I was the only one who thought, um, you know, I can still do this um, just solo wise. And the others, they like being a part of the team. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that everyone we, we left in a good spot. Uh, and everything. I think everyone got uh, the experience that they wanted and needed out of the fandom. And then, like I said, when it reached its logical end, it reached its logical end. And, and I would love for Tech Rat and LTT Moose to come back if they want, but you know, everyone's got to balance time. Oh, yeah, everyone's got to balance what they're going to commit to this fandom. Mm -hmm. And when it starts becoming work yeah. and stops becoming fun, then that's when you really need to, you know, I mean, if you're making money and it feels like work, well, then duh, it's work. It's work. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, but if if it's for fandom stuff and it's and you're not getting the satisfaction out of it, then you know, end on a high note. It's, yeah, it's, and, 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 good, and good for them, and good for them. Yeah, it's good for them. I just haven't heard from him in a while. I'm sort of worried about him. You know, Tech Rat's a friend. I haven't heard, haven't seen hide nor hair of him. You know, LTT Moose is a friend. I haven't heard seen hide nor hair. So uh, you know, I, I, guys, if you're out there watching, you know, send me ringling. I want to see what's yeah, going on. And, and and Tech Rat, if you're in some sort of yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Pac you know, Pakistani or or Ukrainian prison. Yeah. Send the code word one two four eight, and I will come. We will rescue you. We planned this, Tech Rat. Where yes. are you? Where are you, buddy? I'm getting no signal. Snake. No. None. Snake. Yes. That that radio receiver in the back molder. We can crack that. We'll find you. Yeah. Turn it on. Just don't get the other one. That's the cyanide. No, that cyanide's in this side. Remember, radio's in this side. Cyanide's in this side. Don't get it mixed up. Make some. Okay. Um. Let's see. Going back to novels, okay. I'm going to put up another slide here because I've got uh, I've got you set up, baby. So uh, let's see where am I at? Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the slide up because I'm an idiot. Is a slide. I am. But anyway, here's the question. Um, now that you've got two books coming out next year, yep. Right. Are we going to see M. A. Larson amounts of self public self publication here? I mean, he's everywhere. It's like, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. <laughs> you mean self-promotion. Self-promotion. it's not self-published. Yeah, self-promotion. The I'm publisher sorry. is Curiosity yes. Quills Press. They're a very good yes. company. I suggest all your listeners look them up. They yes. have, they do mainly genre work, so it's mm -hmm. all like comedy, science fiction, fantasy. Definitely look them up. They're awesome people. Curiosity Quills Press. In terms of self-promotion, I've already done that. You know, so uh, for those well, of you who follow well, here, my Here's career, some self-promotion. You know, here's some self-promotion oh, right now. Okay. Because you told me at the beginning of the show. That we can actually announce one of these books. Yep. Right? And the title of that book is... Alice Takes Back Wonderland. Alice Takes Back Wonderland, which sounds yes. incredibly full of explosions and John Woo films. Lots of explosions. It is the Avengers of Fairy Tales. The Avengers Tales. of Fa Fairy Tale Land. Yes. Wow. You know, I'd really love to hear some of that. You would love to hear some I of would that. love to hear some of that. Well, I just got clearance from my publisher, Curiosity Quills Press... They said that, you know what, go ahead and promote Alice Takes Back Wonderland, which will be coming in to bookstores and Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Look for it. Spring 2015. Wow. Like they're following um, Hasbro or something. 
<laughs> well, I, I had I had the cover art to show, but then it wasn't going the right direction, so we kind of had to move oh. it. So I think that's pushed the publication back a little bit. Oh, there you uh, go. Otherwise, it'd have an exact release date. But mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, sometime in spring 2015, I'll give you an exact date when it comes. But I got the clearance to read a section. Give me some. Of some. Novel. Give me some because I'm okay. salivating. I want to know. Okay, now now just to set up where this is, this is not the beginning of the book, and like I said, the plot is Al or the book is Alice takes back Wonderland. The 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 short plot is. Alice has to work with Peter Pan and a number of other fairy tales to assemble an army to take back Wonderland from the evil Ace of Spades. That's nice. the plot. So this section here is right before they're going to head back to Wonderland. Okay. And this is where they're assembling the group. So I'll just go ahead and read from it. <clears throat> read some of that. <clears throat> I'm going to get some more. Okay. <clears throat> Jack motioned beyond the robot to the army that lay encamped beneath the beanstalk. They rose to greet us. There were steel-clad knights beneath the Golden Cup banner, a man armed with a great axe who was half as tall as Jack's robot riding a blue ox big as a house, revolver-wielding miscreants led by a coonskin-capped warrior, spitting and heckling as they fired their pistols in celebration of our arrival. There was a company of bronze-shielded soldiers marching under a golden fleece, a diminutive woman in a fleur-de-lis embroidered armor with a flamethrower strapped to her back, two knights with golden halos about their heads bearing lances with their tips carved in the shape of dragons. A golden-crowned, marble-skinned warrior, statue-like in his regality, waved a curved sore in greeting. Behind, beside him was another regal figure who held a leashed minotaur, a man with a thick table leg wearing armor that looked like it was made entirely out of tables, and a lion-skinned draped man with curly black hair whose thick muscles glowed as he gripped a massive club. He rode a winged sky-blue horse that whinnied with anticipation as she flew her rider beside the giant robot. They greeted Cinderella, but they were staring at me. When I saw them, I raised the vorpal sword. We fought Ace alone. We thought there was no one who could unite us. Now we come at the call of the Sleeping Beauty reawakened. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I don't know about you out there in the viewing audience. But I want to know how that happened. How did that get there? I want to know. Because <laughs> that is fucking awesome. <laughs> I can see it now. And all of a sudden, you know... Gas explosions, John Woo film breaks up. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally like just Alice with a sawed off shotgun fighting people with a sword. I mean, it's nice. just, it's, it's, I mean, it, it, it literally what I started out wanting to do with it was I love the concept. And if any of you have read the, 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 the graphic novel, don't, don't, don't even forget the movie, but mm -hmm. the graphic novel and, and, and everything of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. I just love that concept, you know, mm -hmm. where when, you know, Tom Sawyer teaming up uh, w with with the, the, the you know, the, um, yeah. oh, uh, Dr. Heckle yeah. or Dr. Jekyll. And it's just all these literary characters coming together. And I thought, let's do that with fairy tales. No one's done that before. Why not? And let's let's make it let's make it work. And Alice obviously was the best um, yeah. best uh, platform uh, to do that because, you know, she goes to Wonderland and in Wonderland, that's where all the fairy tales are. Yes. Well, it makes sense. Makes sense. I like it. I like it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, the real, the huge question. The big, mm -hmm. the big question. I've got chills. I've got chills. Mm. <sighs> big question. Just who should be the voice of Star Swirl's Bearded? Now, you, you just, you just revealed something that I was thinking about last night. <gasps> because I am a fan of the Star Swirl the Bearded is Discord fan theory, fan canon. I'm oh. a fan of that theory. I enjoy that mm. theory. I, mainly, and here's, I was actually, de I was actually, um, I was actually uh, 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 deconstructing why that theory exists. And uh -huh. here's actually the reason I think it exists. It's because Star Swirl the Bearded is an awesome character. And the problem is, we don't have any character from the present show who could be him. And it's sort of like, we want him to be a part of the present show, not just some ancient character that died ages ago. We want to feel like yeah. he's a part of the present show. And the only way to do that is if he turned into Discord. That's the only way, because, I mean, think about it. There's no other character that exists in the show right now that he could have turned into. So that means uh, that... You know, I, you know that, is, that's, that, that is a fanon concept sort of works, but... Yeah. Ah, I lost my ear. Therefore... But, but yeah. the thing is, if you're going to make more money... As Hasbro want to do, Ooh. you don't want to have two characters be the same mm. because there's no merchandising there, mm. right? So 
I'm thinking okay. that maybe in season five or six, okay, or seven, you might have another time spell from the Star Spiral Star Spiral ah, Bearded Wing. Uh-huh. And I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys have seen one of the covers of. In fact, I think I have it. No, do I don't have it here. But one of the covers of the comic book is the great and powerful Trixie using a time spell to come out of a portal to get Star Spiral the Spirited's autograph. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> Think about that it. That is awesome. It's kind of an awesome concept. But what 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 would happen if they wrote a story where they need an answer to a problem that only Star Swirl the Bearded knows because he didn't finish his notes mm-hmm. and they can't figure it out? So basically, you have to go back in time to ask him personally because the 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 death of Equestria is on the line because Star Swirl the Bearded didn't finish a note. <laughs> Or you know, I, I have two answers for that, and I'm going to stick with one as my first one. The first thing is, uh, I want Peter New to voice him, because I think that Peter New should voice him, and so, it would be so awesome. So not, not uh, Jean-Luc Picard? Oh, or gosh! Not... I didn't even think of that! Oh, come on! <laughs> right? You just blew my mind! Discord and, and, you know, Q and Jean-Luc Picard going back and forth. No, that's brilliant. I'm, 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 I'm no. on board. I'm on board. And if you can't get Picard, get Worf. Like, if, if, if Patrick Stewart's too yeah. expensive... You know, I don't know if Worf is doing anything. Well, Ian right. McKellen. Just have him pull out Gandalf. You're throwing out too many. You're, you're throwing out too many names that I would just geek out in general. Being uh, I did, I, that's, it's, <laughs> that one of that. That's it, right? Yeah. So, um, next. Uh, now, as a writer, as a writer, I think okay, you should what do you think <laughs> of the story of Daring Do being a real pony, and the alter ego of GM Barrow? <laughs> okay, being a real pony and the alter ego of of uh, GM Barrow. Yeah. Uh, you mean like Daring Do is a real pony in yeah. real life? Well, no, is, what, is no, no. What, what what do you think? Now I'm, we haven't actually talked about this, but yeah. in the Daring Do episode where it's revealed that AK Yearling is Daring Do, right? right. As a writer, uh-huh. do you think that was a valid concept? You think no, they should brilliant. have done love, that? No, I love it. 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 I think it's awesome because it's so perfect. It's it's such a cir- cyc- cyclical way of telling Rainbow Dash's story. This idea that she is this, you know, not you know she's she doesn't think of herself in this high and mighty manner, but she actually is. And then G, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Aki Yearling is this diminutive person, but she's actually daring to. But you know, it, it's it's a great thing for 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 uh, Rainbow Dash to be able to empathize with. You oh know, yeah. Here's her hero in Living Flesh, but she's also this um, subdued writer. Mm-hmm. My only problem with the daring to thing, it always just seems to me, and I, I wrote the the, uh, the G- EQI making fun of this because like, where the heck is Celestia when they're trying yeah, well, to yeah. the sun? Trying to try to bring you know eight hundred like, years of underlying heat. Where's Celestia? Yeah, I, I control the sun. This doesn't work. You yeah, it doesn't work, baby. Read your like, and so that I just had this brilliant idea of just Celestia seeing all these problems and just laughing and like, oh, I actually hope your plans succeed because yeah. then I can make fun of you. Then I can I make fun of you. Lower the sun. Yeah. Because you know I'm Celestia. <laughs> Deal with it. And then and then of course Daring Do retiring because she's like, why am I working so hard? hard. <laughs> yes. And then of course, of course, as a writer, have you you've seen the Daring Do box set? Yes. Oh my God! Have you seen this thing in person? It is brilliant. It is brilliant, brilliant from a marketing standpoint. I oh, mean, yes. if you were a writer, you know, say uh, Alice takes Wonderland, right? Could you imagine having them do a box set like this? Put my books in a box. Yeah. Charge people for that box. That's awesome. Yeah, that that is. I mean, I, I can't believe I couldn't even think about GM Barrow sitting around saying, "Hey, we're thinking about printing your books like this. What do you think?" And she's saying, and no. she's like yeah, vibrating, she's saying, you know. It's like, yeah. no, I don't like that at all. But go ahead and do whatever you like. Right. Yeah. No. Just, it's like a pirate box. It it's does. Like, it's it's a pirate box, man. Up. It's a freaking pirate box with treasure. Yeah. It's cool. Um, so before we go to break, uh, what one cartoon, one, mm. one, would you like to write for? Oh gosh. Oh. Uh. Only get one. One cartoon. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, you know, currently on air? I, you know what? Let's just say all the way back in the dawn of history, the cartoons. What one cartoon series would you want to write? I, don't say Ed, Ed, and Eddie. You can't say that one. Can't say Ed. Because no, we know that. Right. 
writers. They didn't have writers. They didn't have writers for one. The storyboarded and then they made it. So mm -hmm. okay. You know what? There's part of me that wants to say Gravity Falls, but there's probably a part of me that would love to write a Time Squad episode. Mm. I think I'm going to have to say Time Squad. Time Squad. Because I love history. Yes. I love talking about uh, history and everything. I'd love to write a Time Squad episode because then I could go to like an awesome period of history and mm -hmm. showcase history, yeah. teach kiddos, and have a funny Buck, T Buck Tud Russell. And my words would be spoken by Mark Hamill, who is the voice of that robot that... that, that yeah. Oh, that I'm doing a horrible impression of him right mm -hmm. now. Yes. He had that, you know, you know, he's like a gay Joker kind of thing. <laughs> you know, he has to be more fabulous than the Joker. Obviously. He's fabulous, fabulous. Joker. I'd love to see fabulous Joker. Fabulous Joker. Yes. So with that, we're gonna go off to commercial. So when we come back from commercial, we'll go over. You know, we don't have any more conventions this year, so we'll start talking about next year. Uh, yeah. And then we'll go over uh, charity work, and then we'll get Screwball on the call so that all you out there can ask this gentleman anything you want to know about writing or EQI. Or we'll just BS for another or, hour. Or, or tables. Yeah. That we could do that. We probably, we probably will. So I didn't want to talk tables. Hang around. We'll be back in a minute. Are you tired of the high-pressure sales tactics from rank amateur merchants? Are you tired of shady characters trying to take you and your bits for a ride? Would you really rather be shopping in a glorified flea market? Don't want to pay canterlot prices? Avoid the Bucksters and the snake oil salesman. Come to Ponyville's oldest family-run business, Rich's Barnyard Bargains. You'll find us at the corner of Appleton Way and Stirrup Street. Look for the billboards. You can't miss them. There, you will find a warm, brightly lit, and friendly atmosphere. We have everything from alfalfa to zap apple jam. Look at all that stuff! Oh yes, we carry home improvement supplies and tools for all those last-minute weekend projects. And remember, Rich's Barnyard Bargains. If it ain't filthy, and it ain't stinking, then it ain't rich. That's right, ponies. If John Woo comes to Ponyville and starts setting up gas bombs to film his latest, go to Rich's Barnyard Bargains for everything you need to fix all of that damage. All of it. He's got thatch. He's got hammers. He's got nails. He's got goo gone. At I'm discount sure. price. At discount prices. And remember, if it's not filthy and it's not stinking, what is it not? It's not rich. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And we're back with one David Holmes. Good evening. Good evening, Ponyville. Again. Yes. So, let me get the script up here because I'm, like, eating Smarties and not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. I think I was a professional or something. Okay. Convention season. Convention season is over. Over! I'm crying. There isn't any left. None. Grand Galloping Gala for EQLA was actually last weekend, which was, I think, the last thing that was going on. Um, so, that's cool. But... Now we can all rest and recuperate and relax mm. and start our new projects for next year. Yay! Yay! Because what's coming up? April? BabsCon. BabsCon is back. April 3rd through 5th, 2015. They've already got awesome guests. John Delancey and Kathy Wisluck will be there. Art, vendor, panel, and event applications close later this week. So if you want to do something at BabsCon, get over there and make an application and they'll let you do something. So what? They need applications for all that stuff, including if you're a vendor, get it in now. And on top of that, they're going to have an art show this year. So if you're an artist and want to hang art in an art show, then contact them. They, you get all the details. Then Everfree Northwest, which is May 29th to 31st, 2015, already also has John Delancey. But they also have Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain. So they got the big three, Discord, Princess Celestia, and Princess Luna. <sighs> Who else could they get in that time? Wow. That's, that's a good a lineup twist. already. That's a, that's a triple beautiful thing there, I'm telling you. Um, they also have an art contest going on, so go over to their website, everfreenw.com, for more information on their art. And they're looking for volunteers to work on the show. So if you feel like volunteering, get over there and also apply for that stuff. Um, okay, so charity work, charity work. Uh, last show, we had Dr. Wolf. Wonderful Dr. Wolf was here. 
Uh, we talked about all kinds of good stuff, but uh, we actually, his charity was the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And uh, we did wonderful that one. We did 652 bits for them. That's awesome. Thank you very much, everybody, for your help. Um, that one hits pretty close to home for our, our uh, fandom. We know that. So that was a good, good, good deal. Um, and then check the website later. We're going to get uh, all of our tallies for the last few charities together. And hopefully we're going to break 50K real soon. So either this one or the next one is going to be really close. Um, so giveaways for that one was... The Nightmare Nights shirt, just like the one I'm wearing, but this one's in purple. Show so, it to show him. Show it right there. Nightmare Nights shirt. This one was given to us by Buttons. Thank you, Buttons. And then a Silver Slinger dog tag Discord, also given to us by Buttons. Thank you, Buttons. And a, I will slip in there a secret shipfic folder card, the mustache competition. That is mine. I'll slip one of those in there. And a box of Smarties. Because I've got 54 of these things, which I can't That's eat all the of them. the biggest prize. Yes, the biggest prize is the box of Smarties from me, my favorite candy. Brought by Margin Lion. Thank you very much, my buddy. And because we cracked 500 bits, this Petty World Academy hardcover book right here. Beautiful art inside. Signed to you, Stay Princessy, My Friends, by M.A. Larson. So if you win that, you get this too. And I have a hat full of names. Where do we have? I'm gonna dig, 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 and a hat full of names, and we'll take this one. Yeah. <laughs> subtle wind, subtle wind. You haven't won in a while. Thank you very much. You get the prizes, my friend. So uh, we'll get your mailing address once again, and we'll get that out to you next week. Thank you very much for your support, and everybody else out there for your support on everything we like to do around here to help other people. Because helping other people is what? It's awesome. And so, we're going to move on to Dave's charity. Yeah. And Dave's charity is Opportunity International. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a little bit around here that, that we wrote up. Um, the deck is stacked against most people in the poorest parts of the world. Where the saying is, it takes money to make money. Uh, in the harsh fact that traps most people into the cycle of poverty, there isn't any. So, Opportunity International, through its many local projects is breaking people out of these traps by restoring vital neighborhood businesses in the wake of disasters, by teaching how to run a business, and by providing the seed money to make dreams of financial independence a reality for women in countries that refuse to educate females and for other people in the poorest parts of Africa and other places. Opportunity International lifts people into better lives. It's amazing how far a few bucks can go, and we're going to get there. So, we are going to give away this pile of stuff over here. And put my Smarties away because you're not getting that bag of Smarties. That's what I'm right. Um, we're going to give away one MIDW comic. This is part three of four. The good Sombra arc. I know that uh, Screwball is going to love that one. Screwy loves it. Screwy loves it. Yep. So that is a beautiful comic book right there. What else have we got? Oh, I think we'll throw in... A dog tag, because I still got some of these. So dog tag. We're gonna throw in another box of Smarties from Margin Line. I'll throw in another secret ship fit card right there. Mustache competition with moi on it. Now we break 500 bits. That's that's for anything, anything at all. You get that pile of stuff, and probably some other stuff I got in a box upstairs. I got a lot of little Chotsky stuff that I throw in the boxes. Got tech any, rat up any, anybody, I got Tech Rat in a box upstairs. But you don't get Tech Rat. You know, that's where I get my comedy from, is Tech Rat's in a box writing for me. Hey, it works. But if we break 500 bits, you're going to get this DVD, which is Keys of Friendship. Right there, that DVD. Rarity Takes Manhattan, Pinky Apple Pie, It Ain't Easy Being Breezy's, Twilight Kingdom 1 and 2. Right there. So that you're going to get. But not only that. Not only that, our good friend, Charlotte Fullerton, has sent me oodles of things to give you guys. So, we'll also send out this, because it's a writer day, this cover of a script that she wrote, signed by her, right there. Look this, at that. Look at that. It says, Stay Brony, my friend, Charlotte Fullerton, 2014. This is My Little Pony, Opposites Attack, episode 008, story by Charlotte Fullerton, Locked Polish, January 14th, 2010. And she puts a note here. It is the working title of 
look before you sleep. So that will also go to you. Sign. That's Charles a piece Polk. of brony history. That's a piece right? of brony history right there. Frame that. Yep. I got like more of those. I got, she sent me so much stuff you wouldn't believe, Dave. Believe the stuff she sent me. She's such an awesome, awesome person. If you aren't watching Ben Ten or any of those other shows she's doing, go watch those. Yeah, if you don't if you like Ben Ten, she's good. basically running Ben Ten. She's basically running Ben Ten. That's yeah, why she couldn't get her on the show forever. Yeah. Because she was like, I'm I'm I've got like a day now I can be super on the busy. show. Super busy with Ben Ten. Yes. So all of that for five hundred bits or more. And I'm sure we're gonna break that. I'm sure we're gonna break that. So and everything else that's been won has been boxed, except for one person who hasn't gotten back to me yet, so I'm still working on you. But everything else has been boxed and should go out by next week. So if you're waiting for stuff for me, it's either in the mail or it's coming soon. So, trust me. <laughs> One other and, thing. And can I, okay, go ahead. I, just, I want to make sure I sell the charity. Uh, okay, you sell the charity right now. I'm going to sit back okay. and have a drink. The, the charity is is uh, just Opportunity National. I know it might not be a subject that a lot of people are familiar with. There's this concept called microfinancing. Yes. If you look at a lot of people in the poorest parts of the world, you can, you know, there's that, there's that, you know, that proverb, teach a man to fish and yeah. he'll, and he'll never go hungry versus just give a man to fish. He's, he's eaten for a day. This is the teaching, teaching people to fish concept. It's the idea that we're giving you the ability to encourage you to get yourself out of poverty, not just throw money at a problem, yeah. which will go dry up. And then, you know, this is the idea that the, the, the best way to get people out of poverty is to, in, is to lift up their own economies so they can be self-sustaining. Right. Uh, because we don't want uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, or, or whatever. We don't want these countries to be impoverished forever. We want them to be good economies. We want them to, to do well. I mean, look at what China, how many bil a billion people are now having a better way of life because they've been able to have economics lift them out of poverty. And so yeah. we want to incorporate, bring that to the places where literally a $10 loan or a $100 loan, imagine, Someone who had just like the, like I saw this thing. I, I have an MBA, and so we, we learned all about microfinancing. The guy won a Nobel Prize for this, and so the idea was this: this lady, she wanted to make stools and mm -hmm. sell them at the local market, and they like they cost like two dollars. She was going to charge two dollars, but it, she had to spend like five dollars to get the enough necessary materials to make her stools. So she got a loan for five dollars because she had zero access to money. Right. anywhere and then she takes that she makes all of her stools with the money that that she needs to get the materials she sells them she makes maybe ten dollars she mm -hmm. pays off the five dollar loan bam she's got five dollars in her pocket how much better is it that that person can do every day go make that five dollars versus someone just say hey here's a hundred dollars bye mm -hmm. you know so that's the idea it's it's in allowing yes. people to to have that opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise yes have. micro loan finance is some hugely good stuff i mean it's it's been around for what about five years now dave Five or six. Yeah, years. it's it's relatively it's relatively new, new but uh, yeah, take take a really good look at microfinance loans, um, and you'll find some good stuff being done um, out there in the world. So moving on, I want to remind you guys one more time because this is the last time I'm going to remind you because it'll be over by the time we come back. That Jim Burrow, our good friend Jim Burrow, is running a contest, draw or depict any scene or character from any of the three new Daring Do books. Right? Any of the three new Daring Do books. In and, the box. Yep. And get that to her Twitter by November 25th, which is like Monday coming up, I think. Um, she, she will announce the winner on Thanksgiving. So do something, anything, fun, draw, costume, whatever. And you know what you're going to win? Her own Daring Do plushie from Kitty oh. Durrell, signed by her. The plushie off the, her back. The plushie off her back is what you're going to win. And actually, if you guys go to any of these conventions, right, and she brings books to sign, she has to pay for all that herself, right? So if you're getting stuff from her, you know, that's coming out of her own pocket. Her generosity to get you guys stuff, is it's all from her. And she's a wonderful person, and we want to support her and her books. So buy her books because they're good, they're awesome, and if you buy the books, the publishers can go... Huh, those books are selling. I wonder if we should make more. Duh! Yeah, let's make more. Like, more daring do. Like more. I think GM Burrow is, maybe yeah. she's A.K. Yearling, but I think maybe. she's Rarity at heart. I, I think, think she's she is. Rarity. She's she is. so super generous. Super generous. Super Jenny. Yes, she's good. So, if you want, I mean, Princess Celestia books coming out, Fluttershy books coming out, Luna's come, books coming out, probably. I mean, I'm just assuming. I know, we know the Fluttershy's coming out, but if, if these books are popular, which they are, 
she's probably going to go on down the line, do the princesses, and then she'll do Vinyl Scratch, and then she'll do Octavia, and then she'll be on and on and on and on. But you guys got to buy the books that make that happen. She'll so. she'll she'll do a Discord book, but then you open it up and it'll be crossword puzzles. Yeah, it'll be crossword puzzles. <laughs> and you have to finish. You know what? You have to finish the crossword puzzles to actually read the story. Yeah, and the book is in crossword puzzle form. Yeah, I can like, see it. I can see that. That'd and be then funny. Sudoku's. Yes. <laughs> I can't do Sudoku to save my life. I can't. No, I, tried. I can't either. I, I, I can't, can't do it. even do it at all. Can't even do it. But you know who's missing? You know who's missing right now? Who's missing? Screwball is missing. Screwball! Screwball is missing. Send the Screwball hole. Screwball! Yes? Oh, there he is. Oh, wait, you, you, wait, you just say you can't play Sudoku? No, I can't. I love I Sudoku. Sudoku. See that's what Fun. see that's why you're the brains of this operation, my friend. <laughs> wait, Bond's brains, that's funny. <laughs> You are the brains of this whole thing. All, all this whole thing. I can't thing. do Sudoku. Uh, yeah, I, 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 Twilight Pint Glass, by the way. I've yeah. got I've got a Rainbow Dash in a Discord. Did you get Did you get that at this year's BronyCon or the this? Or the this last is year? actually not even mine. Oh. This 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 belongs to Nathan. This is Nathan. Nathan has the entire set. I have Ooh. I have Rainbow Dash. Ooh. So this is Nathan's. So I have to make sure I don't drop it or anything. But yeah, he I has have, the whole set. So I we do have a whole set in the house. Yeah. The only the only thing I have that comes close is, is a, a big Macintosh can. Uh, a yeah, canteen. I've got a hu- I've got a huge tumble. Yeah, you know, I got a huge beer tumbler that has sweet apple acres on it, which is awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, that's good. Mmm. Mm. But man, normally when I find the guys who do this, it's in Milwaukee. There's no way I can get six of those home without breaking them. No. So I'm sort of waiting until you know BabsCon rolls around. So hopefully the people that do this come to BabsCon so I can buy them locally. And get them home. Don't they them. have any websites or anything like that? You I don't? don't know. I'm too, it's a toughie to find. I'm too busy. I'm too busy, like, doing no. stuff. All, all you artist people sell dusty yes. uh, MLP-related cider Cider glasses, yeah. Cider paraphernalia. Uh-huh. That's what I need. Cider paraphernalia. Oh, AC. <laughs> AC Race Best, what do you want? Uh, sending out the usual reminder that I need footage by this Thursday for the React. Yes, I know, AC. I'm in the middle of a show now. Come on. Leave me alone. Come on. Come on. You know what we need? What? We need AC Race Best on the we show. We do. We need to get AC Race Best on the show. What do you, what do you guys Come think on. out there? What do you guys think out there in the chat? Should we get AC Race Best on the show? I say, yeah. Should we get, him, should we get so him and now. Saber Spark on the same show? Oh, that's how the internet breaks. That's how the internet breaks, I think. <laughs> well, not here for a month afterwards. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah we'll, we'll be here for a month after that because they broke my show. Kind of <laughs> so anyway, we're here. I'm sure those wonderful viewers out there have some questions for us. Um, yes. So, start sending them down the line, man. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, so, this one is from Mason Elcast. Mason L. My, what? Mason! Mason! What's up, buddy? He's actually He actually just had to leave for something. I think he'll be back shortly. Oh, but no, I guess, okay. I know the one time. Uh, <laughs> but, a uh, uh, question for Joe Mocked any llamas lately? I have. I have mocked lots of llamas uh, Llama repeatedly. Um, and,. Uh, he, he, he's referencing the title of my book, yes. Uh, which is uh, that's uh, before I got re- really published, I got self-published, yes. Uh, which is free to do. Publishing is is much harder uh, to do. Anyone, anybody can put a, a book up on Amazon, which I did because I'm anybody. Yes. Um, and it's a book I put up uh, based on my real life story of my trip to Peru, where I was on the side of Machu Picchu and a couple of llamas started humping each other. <laughs> uh, and, and so that that's what? sort of the inspiration for um, the book. Yes. Uh, and so you can get it on Amazon right now. It's a Kindle book. You can go on Amazon.com, type in Joe Stevens Moxalama, and it should be there. It's still got five star reviews. So very wow, happy. I might actually have something to buy for my Kindle, which I don't have anything to buy. For. I know, and it's great. I've had a Kindle, I've had a Kindle forever, and I think I've got three technical books on it, and that's it. I bought the entire works of Edgar Allan Poe for ninety nine cents. Wow. Now I have all of Edgar Allan Poe on oh my, my little goodness. tablet. So it's like whenever I I just bring that anywhere I'm in an airport, whatever, it's like, oh, look, I'll read a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. There you go. Done. Nice. I'm, sneak, I'm sneaking past it right now. <laughs> my mom dropped us some past it. I'm just like, oh, oh you look so good. <laughs> Your, your, um, your mother tortures you, dude. She does. Every she time every time we're in the middle of a show, she brings you food and sets it in front of you. She purposely sets it right there. And probably grins evilly what, as she walks out she the door. You, what did she bring you by? She, actually, now this, this isn't really, I have no idea what this is, but it's like some kind of like spinach, and it looks exactly like shaped like a pie. 
Ooh. <gasps> spinach pie. Spinach pie. It must be like a spinach pie or something, but whatever it is, it's just like, I want to eat you, but then you're going to hear like, <laughs> oh, this is so good. Mm. Screw it. <laughs> no, no chomping on the, on the show. <laughs> uh, so, um, actually, also from Mason Elcat, real, real question is, are you working on any new books? Most I am. Yes. I just finished um, a science fiction on Thursday. So last Thursday, so I'm currently in the process of editing. It's a space opera, which Ooh. those of you who know the genre, that means basically Star like Wars. Star Wars, yes, type stuff. So it's like a Star Wars kind of thing. Um, and I also got a um, middle grade fantasy, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically like Harry Potter stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, both of those are being pitched to publishers and agents. Um, and if I get a contract on those, I will make an announcement. But right now, they, they're currently under the review process. Review. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's fun. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, working my uh, tushy off. Yes. Um, writing my things. hindquarters off, uh, writing every day, uh, getting those books out there uh, because I want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, ooh, so this is from Trailblaze to you, Joe. What is your favorite story that you have covered from Ponyville? I think, and this is probably the thing that, that giggles me the most, is the fact that my first story I ever wrote is so much, I've gotten so much mileage out of that. I still think that my very first story I ever wrote is my absolute favorite story I've ever covered, which is... The 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 uh, Sonic the Rainbow Dash is declared a weapons of, right, a weapon yeah, of mass, mass destruction. destruction. Yes. So I th just like I think that my entire career is devoted to the the silliness of that headline. Yeah. Uh, the fact that I literally just typed that into an email, sent it off to Seth, and he posted it on the front page of EQD. I mean, I mean, how crazy is that? That in the body of an email wasn't even formatted. Yeah. Right? It wasn't even a Microsoft Word. It was just like a block of text mm -hmm. and he put it on the front page and I want my entire status in the fandom so thank you Seth I, every time I see him at convention I'm like yes Seth so much, love you so much and uh, so um, yeah I think I've gotten so much mileage out of that story and it continuously and the reference to the fact that the ch that, that this, you know I love this line you know I, I, I can still remember it I can't, I'm going to miss it do it wrong but it, it was like um, the equestrian government, the Saudi Arabian government, and the Chinese People's Republic Army, or whatever. And so the fact that I throw in China in there yeah. as one who's also declaring Rainbow Dash a weapon of mass destruction, it's mm. always been my favorite. Well, what was absolutely hilarious about that is that you were actually going to China yeah. on business yeah. to talk on walnuts. Business. On and you actually meeting. filmed yourself in China in a business meeting and worked oh, that into the freaking story. I was at a meeting what? with the governor, yeah. with the governor of Missouri and the governor of Ch of Hebei Province, China, yeah. and I was filming it for my uh, Equestrian Inquirer bit, and yep. I used some of that footage in my Equestrian it Inquirer was, bit. It was a freaking scream. I sang I sang the theme song to a cab driver in Hong Kong. Yeah, yep. it was <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Oh my goodness! Although I, th I think the favorite thing that I had, I my favorite thing that you guys ever did was covering the the, the princess election? election in 2012. Yes! Oh, that was the that was the, yeah. That because was I got we got so much mileage out of that on this show. Oh yeah! If on I can think show. of the high point of our entire I don't want, want to say career, but our yeah. time, the high point of the high points for us, other than you know BronyCon 2012, yeah. just you know, that convention is aside, our high point was definitely the election night. Yeah. When we literally we recorded, we had we we wrote and recorded two separate speeches, mm -hmm. one for Luna and one for Celestia. And if Romney won the election, we were going to play the the Luna speech. Mm -hmm. And if and if Cele and if uh, President Obama won the election, we were going to play the the, the Celestia speech. Mm -hmm. And we recorded both. And somewhere I don't I might <gasps> be able to find that acceptance speech from Luna and put it on YouTube. Somewhere. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be great. Alternative what could have history. happened? What could have happened? History to alternate history. Yes. Yeah. EQI. You know what? You can do an EQI alternate history yeah. edition with, you know, what What if Luna won I think the best. You know, no, you know, you know what you should do is you should bring that out on the next election because we won't be having Obama anymore. So there you go. Have sure. that come out on that election after after wins, then you could put Luna's for. It's like this is what could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, yeah. we could, we could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Maybe the next time it'll be like Celestia is stepping down, so it's gonna be Twilight versus. Uh, yeah, Twilight versus Phoenix. Luna. 
no Twilight versus Cadence or something like that. Oh you know? no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. you gotta have you gotta have a three what? you gotta have a three way. Twilight is the new candidate for Celestia's party. Luna's coming back to run against her, but uh -huh. but Princess Cadence is the independent. The Green Party. The Green Cur Party. <laughs> Curse you, Ralph Nader. Curse you. <laughs> That's good. Of course, we're making all these political jokes, and none of these kids are getting it. Well, I got it. We have a Green Party too. I know you do, but I'm talking about our viewers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they're politically active. Let's hope. Let's, let's hope. pretend. Let's Pret pretend that. Pretend that we know that you all know what's going on in the political climate of your countries. And if you don't, figure it out. So, <laughs> it's important. Um, next. Uh, bo, um, uh, oh, one second. Oh, here we go. So this one's from Silverhoof. Question for our guest. In your, in, your novel, in your novel writing, is there any one writer that influences you the most in your style? Yes. I would say uh, C.S. Lewis is my biggest aspirational novelist. Not necessarily because of his plots, but that is definitely a big deal. The, the, the stories that he writes are just amazing. His syntax. If you, if you just deconstruct the way that man builds a sentence, it is the most... You could, I could listen to... It, he's like the Morgan Freeman of writers. Like mm. Morgan Freeman has the beautiful voice. C.S. Lewis has the beautiful words. Whatever he writes is just like crystal glass music in like crystal ringing in your ear every time you read a, a, a sentence that that man writes if you guys he, it's not as well known as narnia mm -hmm. but he wrote a science fiction trilogy and the second book and, and and it's 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 very well done it's a science fiction trilogy he actually made a bet with J.R.R. tolkien he said that well we both done we both did so after basically creating the fantasy genre between the two of them mm -hmm. they said hey let's do science fiction now <laughs> and they had an agreement that Tolkien would write a time travel novel mm -hmm. a, or a series of novels and C.S. Lewis would write space travel series of novels. Tolkien never got around to doing his before he passed, but awesome. C.S. Lewis wrote his trilogy of space travel. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. Out of Silent Planet is the first one, but the second one's like Perlandria. And that book is the most beautiful. Those two books are the most beautifully written books ever. And so I would aspire to be able to construct a sentence the way that C.S. Lewis does. You, you know, you know, Dave, I, I'm going to stop it right here, but you, you know you have to actually have a second uh, initial for your name. Because yeah. we, we've got, of course, C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Right. M.A. Larson. Right. Right. G.M. Barrow. Right. A.K. Yearling. Fantasy writers like but, initials, yeah. don't they? Yeah. They, they love initials, so therefore you need to be, what, D.D. Hammonds? I had thought about this. I actually thought long and hard about this. And my official author name, the one that's going to be on my books, and I had to change Joe Stevens' box along after I did this, but it is David D. Hammonds. Yes. I decided I don't like D.D. Hammonds. It looks makes me look like a dentist. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> and so, um, and I don't like David Hammonds because David Hammonds is the name of a uh, black rights activist yep. artist in yep. Harlem. Yep. Um, who is most famous for writing a portrait of the white Martin Luther King Jr. And so, not that I don't want to be associated with him, but it's, I, you know, I got to yep. Google search. Google's mm -hmm. got to find me. And so I threw in my, my middle initial in there, um, which I thought, you know, David D. Hammonds. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I go, that's, that's my official name. It's David D. D. Hammonds. Hammonds. Yes. I'm calling you Double D. Hammonds. There you you can go. call me Double I actually double thought D. about that just as an homage to yes. Ed, Ed and Eddie. It's, putting it's like Double D. Hammonds. D D and putting like a little lowercase e in there, so I'd be like E double D, you know, D, you know double <laughs> hands. Yeah, there you, you go. know, just as a little reference. I'm sure Sam Vincent would have loved that. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, come, come on, there we go. Uh, da, da, da. ooh, what? Uh, wait one second. Just making sure I'm reading this right. Um, question about fables. Oh, here we go. Um, so uh, this is um. For fudge cakes, why can't I speak to you? This is from uh, Spike Fireman. Uh, question to you, uh, Joe. Um, could you, uh, 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 um, what were some funny moments interviewing the VAs at the different conventions? Oh, gosh. The, name one that wasn't funny. I mean, every single one was just amazing. I think probably, I will, I'll tell this story because it always blows me away uh, when I did it. Um, BronyCon 2012 was our, um, you know, get out of the, um, you know, trial by fire uh, moment. We, we, none of us had done live interviews before. None of us had done any of that. Mm -hmm. um, thank, 
thank the Lord that Amy King Rogers was our first interview because she was the she was so sweet and so amazing. But I remember after you know, LTT Moose was like our producer. He was he had this binder and he was putting all together the names we were going to interview. Mm -hmm. And I was very much aware that a lot of these people had never been interviewed before, so I knew what the stakes were. It's like the big stakes. Mm -hmm. So uh, they say, all right, we're, we're going to have you interview BronyCon documentary people at X time. So we show up at the BronyCon interview uh, at the time that we're supposed to. And, and in BronyCon 2012, for those of you who were there, it was the Meadowlands Convention Center. There's this big – the green room was upstairs. There was this big central area and a staircase that led up to it. Mm -hmm. And so we're standing by the staircase waiting for who we're going to interview. And I don't know who we're interviewing for. And I, I, we got – standing with our camera and everything, I say, hey – um, who are we interviewing again? And they say, oh, you're interviewing John. I say, excuse me? And as I say that, down the stairs comes John Delancey. Mm -hmm. Now, I am a huge Star Trek The Next Generation fan. <laughs> and Q is literally my favorite villain of all time. Mm -hmm. And so here is a person who, like, I connected with my mother watching Star Trek. And so here's a, like, a image of my childhood walking down the steps <laughs> and, and, and i'm just like i kind of inhaled and we're like okay we got to do this so he walks all right shake him well, big fan uh and so we go upstairs and I, I don't know if you watch that interview my hand is holding up the mic and i'm asking <gasps> questions and i'm doing it i'm just staring at my hand mm -hmm. don't shake don't you shake the mic <laughs> my hand is shaking and I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, don't you dare shake. You keep still. Because he is talking into you, you hand. He's talking <laughs> into you phone. And you have to stay still. Because if you shake, they will see how terrified you are right now. And so we got through the interview. John Delancey goes downstairs. And, uh, and Tech Rat and, uh, um, my, and LT Moose. All right, we got to go. We, we ran long on that interview. So we were supposed to interview Andrea Libman like now. Uh -huh. So we got to go get meet Andrea Libman on the other side of the convention center. So let's go. And they're walking down the stairs. Hold on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just like come decompress at that moment. And, just, and I stand up and say, okay, let's go. And so now I'm going to interview Andrea Libman. We get downstairs and I see John Delancey walking through the crowd. And he's walking through the crowd. And I look at him. I'm like trailing him a little bit. And I'm like, he has no handlers, but no one's swarming him. Yeah. Like people just kind of walking past him. They're just walking. What, what, what's happening? And I asked the people, like, what's happening? What's happening? And they say, oh, there's a fire. There's a fire going on right now. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, there's a fire back there. I look back to, to, to our cameraman and I say, let's go. And I, <laughs> I, sh I shove him ahead of me and we swivel the, the tripod using it as sort of like a, 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 a spear to swerve mm -hmm. our way. We swim through the crowd with our tripod, you get out of the way. And we run back to the other end of the convention center. We put down, we put down the, the, the camera and Tech Rat says to me, he says, Joe, what are you doing? We're, there's a fire, we're told to evacuate. I say, no, we are filming this. He says, oh, Joe, are you crazy? I say, yes, now start filming. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and to tell you the truth, I think it was the most brilliant piece of, of you know, the very last minute that anybody covered it. I mean, it's like you guys, it, you guys said, okay, somebody, ha somebody has to document this. Let's do it. Yeah, and, and, and I was just like, I don't care if the building's coming down. We're putting the camera down, and we're filming this. Yes. And, and we're not turning that camera off until we get what's going on. And so I'm standing there filming, and all of a sudden there's a, there's a boom mic underneath me. And then, the, oh, look, they're filming yeah. me. They're filming us filming the fire. Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> I, yeah. so the I, documentary I, people filmed you guys filming the fire. Right. I mean, I got a million interview stories, but that's probably my favorite. I still, I still think, you know... A, you guys doing the stuff at Las Pegasus, Unicon, was a scream. I mean, you guys came up with all kinds of weird stuff. Like, you know, Peter knew and you interviewed LTT Moose. And LTT Moose went off like a diva. It was freaking hilarious. We had, we had, okay, I'll tell you the lost, the lost interview of Peter New. You want to know the lost interview? Yeah, of yeah. Let's, 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 story, story, story time. Okay, so we had three interviews set up with Peter New. He came mm -hmm. up to us. He said, I love you guys because we did. Oh, remember the, the when yes. Everfree Northwest? We in did the shower. That? In the shower. <laughs> Loved the shower. But like, so Peter New is like shaving. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the curtain just pulls aside, and there's me and Tech Rat. And you're like, Peter knew. And we just, like, without hesitation, like, not even acknowledging that it's a thing that we've been hiding in a shower. Yeah. And the interview, we just go back in the shower. Yep. Uh, and, and so he's like, I love doing that with you guys. That was awesome. So let's do more of that. So the first yeah. interview we do is legit because it's been a year. Yeah. We needed, you know, actual stuff. And the next one um, was 
and Peter knew and LT Timu switched places pretending to be one another, mm-hmm. and that was funny. And so Peter's idea for the third one is like, all right, guys, here's the deal. I'm going to stand outside the casino. We're going to go outside. You're going to film me by the casino doors. I'm going to be like all disheveled and everything. My hat's going to be gone. I'm going to be like wearing a weird thing, and I'm going to be like – uh, and we're going to be like, oh, Peter, like you walk by, like you, you're like you're you're just filming. And you're like, and we're on the strip and we're walking around. And oh, look, oh, wonderful. Watch Peter. Peter, what are you doing here? And just like and it, oh, oh, yeah, I lost all my money uh, gambling. And <laughs> I, I, I lost bid on my plane tickets. I can't get home. And uh, and, and we were going to make a bit of it where it was it, it was supposed to be funny that we yeah. just happened upon him and he's just yeah. lost all his money. And so when the thing hit the fan yeah peter comes up to us and says don't think we need to do that one <laughs> no that would be a, that would be a poor taste yes oh my goodness so we yeah. can't so bad. that's such bad timing so, yes so any viewers out there who do not know but you probably do uh las vegas unicon basically crashed and burned and most of the voice actors did have their tickets already paid for to get home but some didn't and a lot of people when they when the con couldn't pay everybody, it left a lot of it burnt a lot of bridges. Yeah, so, everyone, including us, yeah. had to just rush to the hotel. We I paid in cash because I'm like I'm not giving them my credit card. I don't yeah. know what they're gonna charge, uh, you know, for me mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff. I mean, it was scary for it, a while. It was it was a nasty it was a nasty weekend, and and we all came together to 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 make it good. And it was a it was a Herculean effort by everybody. And the funny thing, I love the 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 fire drill happening and very yeah. ominous it's like oh, get yeah. out get out yeah yeah no idea they were gonna let us back in at that point it was sunday <laughs> if i remember correctly it's crazy yeah, yeah yeah it was it was very scary it was like scary. It, even when lee brought that up when we were doing the vip party mm-hmm. uh yeah. oh i can, i always remember just the uh, just the feeling it's like this may just be the very last pony con ever yep it was and, uh, yeah. oh. he had the manliest party ever though that was awesome dusty yeah. you and cared when host amazing parties and it was thank awesome. you there you go. It's all care to win, trust me. I'm the face. He's the man. So, <laughs> you, you remember, you know, I, I've got the looks. You got the brains. Let's make lots of money. He's, the, bra- he's the brains. So, <laughs> he's the man. So, um, next. Ah. Uh, 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 ooh. Ooh. So this one's from um, Jamie. You know, farewell, Jamie. I always, I know, I say his name wrong most of the time. My very, very good friend, Jamie. Jamie. Um, uh, he, a uh, question for you, Joe, is what episode got, or I guess for everyone, what episode got you into the show in the first place? I kind of halfway answered this already. I, I, I was into the show before I ever watched it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I, I literally saw three names attached to it. I said James Woody Wooten. Uh, Lauren Faust, uh, James Woody Wooten, who I knew from Ed, Ed and Eddie, mm-hmm. uh, Lauren Faust to Powerpuff Girls and Fosters, and then Tara Strong from Powerpuff Girls and Fosters. And mm-hmm. I said, those three names are attached to this cartoon. I'm going to be a brony. Really? Like, I, I am already a brony. And so what I did is I actually set aside some vacation time to become a brony. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, I'm going to be super obsessed with this show. So I need to, like, prepare myself. I actually avoided watching it until I had some free time. And then I actually took took some vacation time, drove down to New Orleans, and mm-hmm. just watched it in coffee shops in New Orleans. Wow! Uh, over a, over the course of a week, uh, and just you that's, know, de- came that's back. dedication, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's was, dedication. Yeah. I thought I was a brony. No, 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 no. <laughs> Joe, Joe, D, 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 David Hammonds is a brony. I'm I'm just this guy. No, I I wouldn't take a week off of my vacation time, drive to New Orleans, and sit in a in a coffee shop drinking the black, watching the show on a on a on a laptop like I'm some hipster dude. No, no, <laughs> well, I couldn't I think, do that. Well, I think Frenchman Street was a, quite the allure too. I think the Brony thing was just kind of like yeah. bonus. I had been I'd been planning a vacation for quite some time. So well, yeah. okay. <laughs> now that we got that straight, next. <laughs> well, I don't uh, think you answered. I don't think you two answered the question. Oh, well, everybody, the question. Knows, everybody knows mine. Most people know ours, honestly. Everybody knows ours. It's like okay. mine, mine is when Rarity falls back on her bed and whines about not knowing what to wallow in as a horse. It's like and mine brilliant. is find, finding out that Spike is uh, voiced by Kathy Westluck, which yeah. I know her very well from Kid vs. Cat, so yeah. that's how I first got into it. <laughs> brilliant. 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 No. Um, so this one is from... <gasps> James Jones! Defender of all things, Brody. Defender of all things. Scourge to soggy milk. <laughs> I swear, I gotta have somebody, like, draw something. 
so I can actually put it up on the show. You know, with him standing majestically against a mountain with the cape flying and a, and a box of cornflakes in his hoof. Meanwhile, at the Mountain of Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. Oh, uh, so what James got for us. I need to write that whole, I need to write that whole thing. I need to write Soggy Milk. I need to write where Soggy Milk's evil lair is, how he is, the whole thing. I need to, like, voice it. We should do, like, a radio play of oh, James Justice versus oh. Soggy Milk. Oh, um, Moon Solace, he's a very good friend, and she, you never, remember ages uh, ago when she, uh, when she made that amazing, like, pose where yeah. we're together? Yeah. She, she, she says that she, she's totally on it. Do it. Do it. I will use it. it on the show. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but what does James Justice want to know today? Is uh, for uh, uh, um, for you, Joe. Um, uh, are there any comedians slash news reporters that inspired the comedy of EQI? Good. You question. know, you would think that that there would be a lot of um, uh, Joe Stevens came from actually. Uh, this is going into a longer answer that than I probably needs to be, but Joe Stevens came from the Ed Ed and Eddie fandom. Uh-huh. I had started with the Gravy Inquirer, mm-hmm. which was the exact same spiel and the exact same bit, but about Ed and Nettie. And my favorite story from there was like the jawbreakers are laced with mutagen, which is why everyone's got like the giant tongues and everything. So uh-huh. I do stuff like that. And so I carried it over because I thought that, you know, and actually some people remembered it. Mm-hmm. So I kept the name and did that. And when I was decided, okay, now I'm going to transition to video, I literally. It, the the comedy of Joe Stevens is not that he is actually a comedian. It's that he is dead serious. Dead serious. Dead serious about dead serious. really serious, uh, really silly things. Mm-hmm. So I actually was more inspired. I actually ran various tests trying to decide what my voice would be. I ended up with, this is Joe Stevens with the Equestrian Inquirer. But I, I, I experimented with various types. And um, um, I started with, with sort of a British tone, sort of like a BBC reporter, mm-hmm. um, you know. Good evening and welcome to the, to, to the Equestrian Inquirer. Uh, uh, this just in from Ponyville, Rainbow Dash has been declared a weapon of mass destruction by the uh, Equestrian military in the People's Republic of China. You know, just saying it in a very BBC, de- you know, tone deaf voice, I thought that was hilarious. But I ended with the more intensity one because I thought it was easier because I can't do a British accent as well. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm getting echo. Uh oh. I'm getting, I'm getting Joe Stevens echo. Wait. Joe Steve. No, no, what? What? Wait. I I've got a second Joe Stevens. <laughs> I do. I it's I got a second Joe Stevens coming through the portal. I'm inside my own mind. I'm, I I bet you are because he's in my ear right now saying he needs to go live now. So, okay. Well, here's Joe Stevens. <laughs> Dusty Cats, this just in. A long-lost document uncovered by Goldie Delicious and a burning duck has revealed that the Apple family is not, in fact, the Apple family. Their real name is Grapple. This came as quite a shock to the Apples or Grapples, but the document clearly shows next to the secret spell in the Necronomicon... Ectu Baratu Nic... Uh, so say the patriarch of this Grapple family. The G and R were smudged and thought lost, but upon closer examination after Pinkie Pie dropped a cupcake on it, turns out frosting is a great way to rejuvenate ancient documents. The Grapple Truth was revealed. Granny Smith, matriarch of the rechristened Grapple family, has taken the change in stride, seeking to crossbreed apples with grapes to make grapple bushes. Her first attempts turned sentient and tried to eat apple bloom, however, and her second batch tasted like shoelaces. But now that they've cleared the orchard of trees and replaced them with grapple bushes, there's no doubt that the Grapple family will be able to once more make their apple-tasting grapes like their ancestors. Applejack, however, has not embraced the change, quoting, I don't know who I am anymore! She was last seen bucking countless inanimate objects in search for meaning. After bucking Sweetie Belle, always a soothing experience, Applejack thought she once more found her role, but it started feeling wrong about the fourth or fifth time. Big Macintosh, however, has embraced this part of his family and claims that the interpretation of their long-lost family name is not to make mixed fruits that taste awful on toast, but grapple as in to wrestle. 
As such, Big Macintosh has begun bucking his way through matches across Equestria, traveling with the Pony Wrestling Federation. He has stopped saying his trademark phrases, e yup and e nope and replaced them with, oh yeah! I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news brief from the Equestria Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. <laughs> and who was that handsome man? Who was that handsome dude? I mean, really, <laughs> through the space-time continuum, we had two, count of two, Joe Stevens. One live and one... Call, someone call Christopher Nolan. Someone call... It's, it's Ponyception. We must go deeper. <laughs> yes. But another wonderful piece of news straight from the desk in Ponyville by one Joe Stevens. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So much fun. Um, and with that, we are moving on. More questions for one Dave. I think I didn't quite finish the last one. Oh, okay, so... and finish that one because your doppelganger broke in on me. Right. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out that newscaster's name. The the guy who said good night and good luck. What was that guy's name? Um, that, the... that was uh, wasn't that uh, Walter Cronkite? Walter Cronkite. I literally so I sat. I watched old footage of Walter Cronkite and I tried to imitate him as best I could because I thought if Walter Cronkite is saying. Rainbow Dash is the is weapon of mass destruction. That would be the funniest thing ever. It would. So it's actually more Walter Cronkite. It kind of mixed with Stephen Colbert a little bit uh, later on, but it began with Walter Cronkite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because I, I grew up with Walter Cronkite. I mean, I just, my parents would sit me in front of the the TV and we'd watch Vietnam updates for the first five or six years of my life. Right, and he's the most trusted journalist in the history of television, yeah, so if he's telling you that Rainbow Dash is a weapon of mass destruction, he's got to be serious, right? Quite. And that's where I got the sign-off, too, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. <sighs> um... Oh, wait, one sec. Oh, yeah, I like this. Okay. Uh, this is from Hoolicious for Hooli. you. Um, well, Alice takes back Wonderland, come on tape. I want to hear you read the whole thing with that energy. <laughs> I would love to do the, the audio for my own book. I, I, I would love to do that because then I can be an actor without actually having to be an actor. Because, um, I mean, I, I like doing that sort of thing, but um, I haven't, you know, a lot of times, here's the thing. If everyone buys the book, paper, mm -hmm. then the publisher will turn it into an audio book. The mm -hmm. way audio books work is you, it, it, is very, it is somewhat costly to produce them. Which, so they're only made but, for successful but, but, paper but, books. But, 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 but. He's got this, a bigger publisher. This, though. Okay, I was going to say, because Emmy <laughs> Larson's book was available as an audio book the minute it came out. That's Penguin, I think. Curiosity yeah, Builds is my press. They're, they're, a, they're a smaller press. Um, they are growing. They're doing great. So, like I said, support the, the, the publisher, Curiosity Quilts Press. Look up anything they have on Amazon. It's all good. In fact, I'll, I'll do a shout-out to a, 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 another guy who's a great author. It, the book is called The Book of Bart. Um, it's a comedy about a demon. Um, and and uh, it, it's an award-winning. It was the only fiction humor book to be nominated for this uh, award. I forget the, what the award was. But he's a comedy writer, and it's brilliant. And so that's, you know, so if, if, if Curiosity Close Press gets doing more, and if my books uh, do sell more, mm -hmm. uh, then that's going to lead to bigger publications, and that could lead uh, to an audio book. And like I said, I'd love to do it. I would love to do it. Cool. Send me some of it. I'll try. <laughs> Next. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this one is... Uh, actually, this one's also from James. I, I know a lot of people have asked you this before, but it must be asked live. Um, question for you, Joe. Where did you? Where did the plank plushie come from? <laughs> the store. Where else? <laughs> My ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so she gave you a plank upside the head. It was yes, yes. It was it was a uh, a, a Christmas present, and uh, God, I think my fiance. Hi, Jessica. I love you. Uh, my fiance, if you're listening, um, you can buy me a plank plushie. Unfortunately, they're out of circulation. Um, but but I, I, I she my my ex girlfriend regretfully indulged my love of cartoons, and my current fiance um, indulges alongside me mm -hmm. in my love of Disney movies and Supernatural and all sorts of awesome geek stuff. We went to Comic Con together. Um, I was the, the 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 most interesting man in the world, and yes. we're, we're we're cosplaying as Riker and Troy for the next Comic Con, mm -hmm. uh, and so we're really excited about that. But this it can it, it is an official Cartoon Network merchandise. It's official Cartoon Network merchandise. They sold them for a very short amount of time. I have like 
they made like five Ed, Ed and Eddie toys. Mm -hmm. And three of them come, came from Subway. They had a Subway thing. I remember I walked into Subway. I said, I want the Ed, Ed and Eddie toys. They're like, you want a sandwich? I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 I just got the... So there's not that much Ed, Ed and Eddie merchandise out there. I've seen plushies of Plank out there, and they actually look better than the official Cartoon Network one. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is an official one. It even says Cartoon Network on the tag on everything. So nice. It was just bought online at their store. Crazy. Next. Uh, so this is from Flower Cobra. Dusty, will what? you be doing the holiday stream shenanigans this year? Uh, we might. It's uh, it's up to how many people are here and how many people want to do it. Um, I've got three, count them, three shows in December. Because there's three Mondays in December that, that fall on show dates. So i got to do three shows in December. Plus, if we do any holiday shenanigans, then we'll have to do those shows too. So if we do... I'll announce it on Twitter, I'll announce it on my website, and I'll announce it on YouTube. So if we do do that, you'll know first. All of you fans out there, you will know if we're going to do that thing. So uh, once I start talking to some people, we, we want to do it, and we've got an idea on how to make it really fun. I mean, last year we just sort of mussed around, but we got some ideas on how to make it really fun. And we have been discussing it. Uh, me and Karen have been discussing how we can make it more fun. So uh, keep your ear open. We'll probably do it. But I got to get some people together to make sure that it's going to be fun. Okay, so keep your ear to the grindstone. It'll be, it'll be fun if it does happen. Ooh, uh, I actually, I'll, I'll for actually, Dusty, for the because yes. I know there's a couple people that are are f f new to this. They 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 want to know. Give your definition of the holiday shenanigans. My definition of holiday shenanigans. Yeah, because people are asking about it. Oh, so basically, last year what we did is we actually just uh, I had a separate. You, uh, live stream channel and I called Stay Brun the the manliest channel in the world something like that I can't remember but it's still up there but I have to go go you know revive it and what we did is we just had a bunch of people in the house for the holidays and we just turned the camera on and did stupid stuff just basically we sat there and, and interviewed people who were in the house and and did, you know drank cider and told jokes and we'd call people on the Skype and get them on the call just to, to be stupid right and on Christmas, we actually opened presents, and on Thanksgiving, we ate food, and it was kind of fun. So um, it may happen again. Um, it would like I'd like it to happen. Uh, it just depends on if we can make it a little less, well, a little more structured and a little less non-structured. <laughs> so, but even as, even non-structured, it was fun. So uh, we might just do the same thing again. And if we do, I'll let everybody know about what's going to go happen. Okay? That's good. Ooh. So this one's from Sprite Gaming. Uh, for you, Joe, uh, what do you do for your writing process? Do you use a structure for your pieces? I'm glad that you asked this because um, <clears throat> every writer gets the same question of how do you write. And um, I, I would highly recommend, this is what I did uh, my, my junior year of college. I, I, was a, I was a writing major, but I was also a business major. And so um, the, the, the book I would recommend anyone to read who wants to become a writer is... Um, on writing by Stephen King. And in this book, Stephen King says, I, this is Stephen King's word, I write 1,500 words a day, 1,500 words a day. And that is what it takes to be a writer. That is what Stephen King said. And so I said, okay, well, all right, Stephen King, then I shall do that. Yes. And so I sat in front of a computer every day for 10 years and every day wrote 1,500 words. Now, I don't include weekends on that because I am human. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, I just I sit in, I sit my butt down in front of the computer and I don't leave until I get 1,500 words, and it takes an extraordinary amount of discipline. And you might re write a lot of stuff that's crap, mm -hmm. um, but you know I wrote uh, true story. I wrote 11 books before I ever got published. Yep. It and so practice. yeah, it just it's I liken it to a, a baseball player. You know, you got to have a lot of batting practice before you can show up at the plate and hit a home run. Yeah. And you see Mark McGuire do that, and all you see is the home run. You don't see the thousands of hours of him just standing there in an empty baseball stadium uh, hitting with swinging that automatic bat. pitcher, yeah, swinging a bat over and over. And so I don't consider those 10 novels wasted novels. I consider them batting practice yeah. for the novel that got published. Yeah, look at this show. I mean, the first 10 or 15 or 20 shows that we did are you know hard to watch. But now we got to this point, which has taken us two and a half years, and we've got a format down. We've got great, you know, great uh, audience. We got great questions, and we got a great 
you know, co-host, and we, we all mel- mesh and meld, and, and it's a pleasure to do this show now. So, you know, it's it just takes practice, man. If you're going to be an artist, you have to draw 10,000 bad things before a good thing comes out of your right arm or whatever arm you draw with. Same thing with playing baseball. You know, I started playing baseball when I was like six years old, t-ball. I couldn't even swing a bat. By the time I hit high school, I was smacking homers 545 feet out. But it took me 10 years to get there. Right. And, and, and I so. and I'm 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 not exactly made it yet. So yeah. I mean, with you guys helping Alice become well, maybe I will make it. But um, you know, if you want to talk about to real writers like you know Amy Kenny Rogers or M. A. Larson and those things, you will always hear something different. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a lot of times the reason that I say you know sit yourself down and just write is you will find your prices. You will find what works yeah. for you. Experiment. Do nano. Do do um, you know find a writing partner. Um, I did a weird thing where I wrote a screenplay and a novel at the same time for the same story, and that just kind of stimulated me. So, you know, experiment. Keep mm-hmm. at it. And if you want it enough, you won't quit. Yeah. So there you go. If you want it enough, there's no quitting you. So. Yeah. So you know, what, uh, mm-hmm. you know what time it is, Screwy? Uh, What? You know what time it is? What is it? It's that time. No. I know. No. Yes. No! <laughs> no! 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 But it is that time. We are at the end of the program. So this is the point where Mr. Joe Stevens mm. gets to ask me and Screwball a question. Okay. <laughs> got this part. <laughs> <laughs> caught you again. You caught me. You caught me. Um, all right. Uh, Screwy, I would ask you um, if you had any job in the MLP um, production, what would it be? Oh, fudge. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Holy cow. I want to know um, what you would want to do on the show. What would you want to do on the show? I know it's 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 like what most would ever say, but I would love to do voice or something like that. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, you know what? Forget that. No, I would love to do music. Aha. Uh-huh. Because I love orchestral, and I know for a fact that um, that uh, um, uh, what, that Stefan Andrews is a huge orchestral fan, just like me. We've had so much discussions over it, mm-hmm. and I always wanted to be working beside him and seeing how he pulls it off, because I love. I, I can I can see the hints that he puts into his music to mm-hmm. other other stuff out there, and same with William Anderson. I would love to work side by side with him too, and seeing how they pull it off. And oh man, that that's a dream come true for me. Like, Unsung that would... heroes of MLP, those two. Unsung heroes. They're yes. they're they're excellent. Yeah. Yes, and they're they're amazing. They're they're very very well done in what they do. And uh, I, I, I uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> we've had, we've had Stefan on the show. I've been working on Will Anderson, so hopefully that'll happen in the future. Uh, yeah. And Dusty, I think I know your answer to that question, so I'll ask you a different one. Okay. Um, I will ask you. I know you're a huge cartoon fan from. All your entire life. Yeah. What one show would you want to bring back, whether as a reboot or as just like that ended at season three or whatever, and let's bring back season four? What would you want to bring back? Oh, you know what I want to bring back? I want to bring back Thunder the Barbarian because huh. it ended stupidly. Basically, they were just getting into their just getting into the meat of it at the in middle of season two, and they basically cut it. Done. It was like it was a beautifully a beautifully laid out cartoon. Right, because it was right at that time when you had science fiction, science fantasy happening, and then it was basically a science fiction fantasy. You had bits of Conan the Barbarian, you had bits of Star Wars, you had bits of of magic, you had bits of all of this stuff melding together, and it was like, yeah, it was limited animation, but it was still written well, you know. And it was like, wow, this this could have been so huge, and they just they just gave up on it way too early, way too early. Thunder the Barbarian needs to come back. You can actually buy it now on DVD when it wasn't available for a very long time. But now you can actually get it. And I might actually get that for my dad for, for Christmas because he loved that show. Brilliant. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Thunder the Barbarian. I'd bring that back in a heartbeat. But that, my friends, brings us to the end of the program. So I want to remind everybody out there that we have this t-shirt that we're selling. And it's back up over my shoulder right now. T-shirts. We love t-shirts around here. Um, would love to see you guys wearing it next season at the conventions. Um, it supports the show and gets us, you know, so we can be here for you. Um, love being here for you guys, entertaining you. 
Um, also, check out my YouTube channel, Dusty Cat Roads, for more stuff. We're going to start doing some more stuff on there. I've got this old bike, which is where I fix motorcycles. Uh, I've got some plans for that coming up, uh, probably at the beginning of next year. I'd like to thank Dave for taking time out of his writing schedule. Thank you come, so much, Dusty. Yes, to come over and talk the, to us. The, the book, I hope you don't mind me plugging it one last time. Plug it, plug it, plug it. The book is Alice Takes Back Wonderland. Alice Takes Back Coming Wonderland. Coming to bookstores and Amazon.com spring 2015. It is the Avengers of Fairy Tales. Yes. Alice Takes Back Wonderland. Coming in 2015 spring. But you can get my book now, self-published, Joe Stevens' Moxalama, now currently available on the Amazon Kindle. Yes. Um, with that, I'd also like to thank Screwy for doing everything he does. Amy, <laughs> my wonderful girlfriend. Lance. Bubula upstairs, who does everything else. We love uh, you, here. Nathan, Cowboy Dave, EFN for giving us this whole program, and everyone working on F MLP FIM, which we just announced is going to come spring 2015. Hopefully that doesn't mean May. So, Why May? Yeah, May is the end of spring. We'd like the beginning ah. of spring, please. And stop bugging the people who are working on the show. We now know when it's coming out, so leave them alone. Let them do their work. Make it so dark. <laughs> yeah, shush, screwy. No. <laughs> And all, of course, all you people out there who come and every time we turn that camera on, make dang fools out of ourselves. So you come and laugh at us, and, and we love it. So please keep coming. Uh, we love to see you guys. Next guest in two weeks, Screwball. Uh, um, uh, wait, wait, I'm the guest? What? No. <laughs> Who's the guest? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Oh, come on. I like I like when you surprise me, okay? Okay, here's the surprise. 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 Tommy Oliver. Tommy Oliver is going to be our guest in two Ooh. weeks. He's going to talk all of the things that he's doing on Patreon, all the stuff that he does with his, his uh, YouTube account, all of his, you know, the things that he does. I mean, he sits there and and, and he talks about movies. He talks about the, 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 the show. He talks about a whole bunch of stuff. So... Wonderful, wonderful guy. All the drawings of the Tommy Oliver character are him. He does all the art, too. So he's an artist. He does all of this stuff. So we're going to have Tommy Oliver on the show in two weeks. So come on back in two weeks. We'll have him. And I've got three great shows lined up for December. So don't miss any of it. And hopefully we're going to get people in here for the holidays, and we'll do some holiday special stuff, too. So with that, we're going to catch you later. Be excellent to each other. You know. Good, good night and good luck. Good night. And good luck. <laughs> See ya. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night. Sweetheart, good night. Good night, sweetheart, good night.